This is an exclusive preview of the upcoming On Air 1500, looking today at one of our first prototype systems here at Studer. Now the main console consists of six faders, we have a center section and also a meter bridge. You can add an optional secondary modular six fader bay. This can be bolted directly onto the side of the main system, connecting via a Cat5 cable taking RS422 and power into the main system. So we can end up with a 12 fader operating system or we can take the fader bay and put it in a separate studio anywhere between 60 and 100 meters away from the main surface. Now the surface itself is very familiar to an existing on-air user but it's easy to navigate as well for somebody who perhaps is first time with little experience with audio. The 1500 presents a very ergonomic, easy to learn, touch and action user interface. So if we look first at a general channel strip, we have very familiar features that we would expect of any console. We have our PFL, we have our channel on and off, we have a 100mm fader, unmotorized. We have a direct talkback button into that channel. Here we have a record button. By highlighting it and pressing it in, we are assigning ourselves to the record bus, or it has a second feature, and this is a new feature. By selecting the off-air button right here, which currently is inactive on the prototype, but by selecting the off-air button, when we assign ourselves to the record feature right here, what we're actually doing is controlling an off-air record function. So with this feature, I have a USB stick that I can put into the front of my core for the On-Air 1500 and actually perhaps record off-air an incoming telephone call, perhaps an interview, for use later on in my show. Right here we have a select button, which we will come to. This select button basically means talk to me. It's highlighting this channel, saying I want to do, perform a function on here. For example, we can control any of the channel parameters and edit them very comfortably using console controls right here in the center section. For example, if I wanted to apply a de by selecting the de here, you'll see it's highlighted in green and corresponding green bars have come up on my organic LED channel displays. What this is now doing is showing me the parameter controls for my de -esser. If I select the EQ, it's now color coded to be red and it follows me again on the screens to let me know that I'm working in an EQ mode. We can respond to colors much faster than we can read anything. So again, for an inexperienced user and for any DJ or engineer, we can respond at the snap of a finger to a color to know that we are actually, with an encoder, changing something within an EQ and not in a typical mode of our uh, inline channel on air mode. So going back to the EQ, what this has now done is assigned me my first three parameters, the first band of my EQ. I have a four band EQ here. So I've got my low frequencies, my low mid frequencies, if I press the EQ again, it's like a toggle function. Now I have my high mids and I have my highs. So it's just like on an analog console, I need to punch it in to the channel itself and now I can build my EQ curve and work on each of the different parameters and come back down to my lows and assign it here. So we are just doing this EQ on this one channel that we've selected but I can very easily move across to my next channel going along and building my EQ curve as I wish for each input channel. So that's how our select button works. Here as you can see we have this encoder. This encoder is directly corresponding to this channel or when we are in a channel parameter mode it is assigned to the function that we see on our OLED right here. So it's very easy to read, it's very logical. The button next to it typically is a select or enter button and this is when we're making a selection. For example, right now we're in an input mode. Each of these encoders operates on a channel basis and also on a global basis. 
So here you'll see we have four quick keys, input, game calibration, one and two. One and two corresponds to the first two buses that we've assigned. We have a total of four buses on the Onair 1500. They can be any combination of mixed minus or general use auxiliaries. So in the input mode, when I select an encoder on my channel, so this by selecting input, this means all of these encoders are functioning on an input mode, I can scroll through and decide what input I'm going to bring to this channel. So I'm going to come in and say I'm going to actually assign the CD player for it. I need to bring the faders down because it sees that it's somewhere else. Take it over. So now I have the CD assigned to this channel. If I go to the gain, if I'm on a mic, I can actually control my gain on my input channel with this encoder. And you'll see here as well the function of what's happening on these top screens and therefore each of these encoders is actually noted here. So it's telling me I'm currently controlling along here the gain and calibration again for the input selection and now it's telling me when I press number one I've assigned my first bus to be a mix minus. So this is now my contribution level from this channel into mix minus bus number one and I can go through and create a mix minus structure or now I'll go through and do it on my second mix minus. To get into some of the further features of each channel, I can use this function encoder. As you see, we have the four pre-assigned buttons for quick and easy access for functions we commonly use. To go further, I can work with this encoder to take me through a channel basis that's showing me all the different options I have to assign to these encoders. For example, the pan and balance, I can look at the timers, I can do my program assigns, record assigns, and I also have some EQ controls there as well. So I have an awful lot of options available to me on my surface, which is stopping me having to go or being forced to work with a central screen system, as you more commonly see with the On-Air 2500 and the 3000. So again, reiterating the touch and action use on the 1500, everything is available to, uh, available to me on the surface. Moving up to this top section right here, uh, we have uh, an advanced clock system and timer system. We also have some recorder functions right here. We have a record button and a stop and a pause. Earlier on, we talked about having the off-air record, so I could be recording a telephone interview off-air, perhaps while I have a CD playing uh, on air currently. But meanwhile, for the three minutes I have as a DJ where I don't have to be talking, I'm going to do a quick interview. I'm going to record it directly to the USB stick that I have in the front of my core. And right here, I can have recorder controls. So I can trigger the record going into the USB stick and then also stop and pause it as well. For example, I may want to use it as an editing type feature where I pause the record while I ask the question and I just want to collect their responses and then I can go again and it will carry on recording. Therefore, all I have on my USB sticks ready for playback immediately are the caller's answers or comments. So these, this is a great feature, very handy for the DJ in the studio. The record info, when it functions, would show me right here on this USB stick, it will tell me how much time is left on there. So it's a great way to find out how much space I have left on my recording USB stick. And it also tells me the countdown for the segment that I'm currently pulling off the record system. I have my clock, I have my faded timer, and I also have a manual stopwatch where I have the start and stop functions right here. Again, this is a prototype, so a lot of these functions currently aren't functioning, but they will. Here I have my overview of what is on air, letting me know that I'm on air, and I'm also monitoring my control room. If I was monitoring my studio, it would say right here, and it'd be highlighted in red. 
Again, we had the metering, which we expect. We had the program and we had the monitor. So what we've done here is replaced again the need for our typical on-air screen as a permanent fixture. Though we can actually see all of this information still on an on-air screen as we still use the same software for the on-air 1500 as we do for the 2500 and also for the 3000. And with that we just have a connectivity from the core to a screen which we'll look at a bit later. So coming down, we've covered this section, we've gone through our channel parameters, we know what the on-air button does, and right here we have the master section. This master right here is for the buses. So this is the master level of bus number one. This is the master level of bus number two, three, four. You can see as well the colours change between these buttons, between two and three. This lets me know that these orange ones right here are actually assigned to be mix minus, again using the colour coding system at Studer. And then three and four, being the sort of red colour, is telling me that I'm assigned to a general auxiliary bus. I can turn each bus on and off and take it from stereo to mono. Very simple application. A monitoring section is very typical but also very comprehensive for this console. I have an encoder here for my headphone volume and one for my loudspeaker volume. I have here some different selections for my headphones. I also have an advanced headphone split. And for my loudspeakers I have the typical cut dim, taking it to mono, and also PFL. I have some hard assigned buttons right here for quick assignments for my monitoring section. I can assign my program bus, record bus, listen to what I have off air, for example, what I was recording my telephone interview, and listen to this, and I can also listen to my PFL bus. Right here, I have assigned one, two, three, and four, the four buses, and be able to listen to these. And then I have some talkback controls as well. Now this section right here really comes to the advanced side of the On-Air 1500 and we can start looking at some of the unique selling points and some of the fun features of this console. We have what we call the jingle player assigned on the On-Air 1500 which we'll take a look at a bit later. You have a port on the front of your Student Nano S-Core and with this you can assign a USB stick. We have the playback and record function as we discussed which you could have a USB stick perhaps loaded up with a series of perhaps four, maybe eight different jingles, station IDs, perhaps you want to bring in some creative elements to your show, and these soft assign buttons pick off the files from those, from that USB stick in order, so it would just see these as separate files, file one, file two, file three, file four. What you call the buttons is entirely up to you. We've also assigned four snapshots for the surface, so I could very easily recall my snapshots for different shows or for perhaps as different presenters. I might have a new setting as snapshot one, so all the newscasters know to come in and load snapshot one. Perhaps snapshot two is for the sports show, perhaps snapshot three is for the nighttime music, and perhaps snapshot four is for the weekend entertainment show. We've also assigned some snapshot controls here as well for quick assignment. Again, this right here is really just a quick button area that we've decided what might make sense and again you can use these the same in a soft assign selection and create a surface that makes sense to you and your production. This is the Studer Nano S Core. This is the new core that we have built for the On Air 1500 specifically. Taking a look at the front right now, you'll see we have the rack mount ears on either side. We have the LED lights right here. This is giving me information about my power and also letting me know if my core is active and also having external sync present. I have two headphone ports. The first headphone port is for the control room DJ's headphones and the second is typically for the guest headphones. 
Then you'll see I have a USB port right here. This one is known to be in the data login. Here I can come with a USB stick and plug in and load myself as a user. It's used mainly for the user management. Then I come to the second USB port. You'll see here it's noted as being called the record play. This really is where I'd plug in my jingle USB stick, or as we talked about earlier, plugging in a USB stick to operate as a record and playback system, almost like a transportable cart operation. So when I was recording the telephone interview from earlier, I would be going directly to this USB stick that we would have plugged in here and I'll be able to record and then also play back off it at the same time. Now I have a switch right next to the USB port. This gives me the choice of working with either the record play or jingle USB port as we sometimes refer to it or switching over to work with an extra eight channels of USB. Now this port right here is excellent, certainly in production, where I may want to use an external playback and record system such as Pro Tools. So I can record straight out eight channels of USB to my Pro Tools and also bring in up to eight channels. So again, I have this switch here to make a decision of whether or not I'd like to work locally on my USB stick or if I'd like to go to an external source point. The separate core of the On-Air 1500 contains the audio and control engine. Its straightforward design provides you with standard sockets making any additional breakout panel unnecessary. Right here we have a separate card slot and this can be equipped with any optional D21M I.O. module such as a MADI card, ADAT, AES or an additional mic input card perhaps. Of course, the system does have complete integration with radio automation systems, Studer's CMS call management system, and also the Studer Relink for the I.O. sharing. This allows us to I.O. share with any Studer console or system that's already installed in perhaps what might be a larger facility. For the local I.O. that we do actually have available to us all the time, we have 16 mic line inputs, we have four AES pairs, we again have this D21M card slot for up to 56 channels of extra I.O. On the front of the core, we have the USB port that gives us the allowance of eight extra channels of inputs, perhaps coming or, or going to a playback record system such as a Pro Tools uh, computer. For the outputs, we have the 16 stereo line outs. We have the four AES pairs, which could be looked at as eight monos. Again, we have the D21M card slot for 56, up to 56 channels. And again, the USB port on the front, giving us eight channels of I.O. to any playback and record system. For control, we have eight GPIs and eight GPOs. We have the Ethernet port for control, cab tunnel, DNet, SNMP, etc. Now, the channel parameters can be edited comfortably on the console surface, as we saw earlier. But for more advanced operation, the console provides these interfaces right here for connecting a PC screen, keyboard, and a mouse. And with this, we would then see what we are most familiar with on the on-air operating system, and it will look exactly the same as the 2500 and the 3000, and given us that extended control for the user.